It will take the ROV about an hour to drop to the seabed under the Celtic Explorer. And each dive can be eight hours long. As it descends, the ROV will be virtually travelling back in time. The view at the bottom of the ocean should be no different than it was tens of thousands of years ago. As it approaches the seabed, the light from the ROV cuts through the blackness and illuminates for the first time creatures never subjected to such a glare. Even the brightest sunlight penetrates only a few hundred metres, and except for the dim artificial lights of some deep-sea creatures, this is a world of eternal darkness. Water currents are the arteries of the deep sea, a life support system carrying food, oxygen and nutrients. Without currents, many areas of the seabed would be as barren as a desert. That is amazing. For people who spend years studying the deep ocean, the opportunity to see what lies beneath is a rare treat. These are deep sea corals, which have been found in vast fields along stretches of Ireland's continental shelf. Growing perhaps two centimetres a year, each tree is hundreds of years old. All around the seamount is evidence of extraordinary life. Coral, fish, crustaceans living undisturbed by the Atlantic storms far above. Soft corals stretching out into the view of the camera. But as the ROV continues its journey across the seafloor, out of the gloom comes the disturbing signs of the impact man can have, even in such a remote corner of the globe. The tracks of fishing nets crisscross the ocean floor, the inevitable result of bottom fishing for deep water species like Orange Ruffy. Taking centuries to grow, vast coral gardens like these can be reduced to rubble and utterly destroyed in just a few minutes of deep sea trawling. It takes a long time for such damage to recover and is yet another reason why it's so important to assess and plan for a long-term approach. A viable fishing industry should balance the desire for immediate profit with the potential damage done and the benefits of a catch that could be sustained in the long term. The cameras catch a glimpse of some of the predators that patrol these seamounts, including this rare species of deep sea shark. Sitting at the top of the food chain, these animals are particularly vulnerable to overfishing. Amazing, so if you wish you just had a countless, uh, endless time down here. It's often said that scientists know more about the surface of the moon than what goes on in our deepest oceans, and without knowledge, there can be little proper protection.
Late in the day, the ROV reveals an unexpected glimpse of some orange ruffy. Orange ruffy, always red, and maybe two. That's the final spawning pair left in the North Atlantic. <laughs> Yeah, it was great to see some orange roughly on the dive. That's very encouraging. They're normally quite scared, scared off quite easily. So yeah, it was good to see them. February is drawing to a close and Ireland's first deep sea survey is coming to an end. Despite the weather and the time of year, all projects have been completed, all targets reached. Yeah, we've managed, to, we've done it. And uh, we've, had, we've got all the data collected. So thanks very much to everybody for all your serious hard work um, we'll see what comes out of it we've got some really good stuff uh, where yeah it looks really good with reports coming in worldwide that many deep sea species are under severe pressure this voyage will add invaluable data to the whole picture and any future fishing plans for orange ruffy or the other animals that live alongside them a lot remains to be done over the next few months, the mountains of data will be analysed. And this information will start to give Ireland, for the first time, its very own profile of the marine creatures that live on the country's deep continental shelf. We have to look on it that Ireland has a responsibility to look after this ecosystem. Equally, we have a fishing industry on our west coast. If we manage it properly, we can have a profitable fishery for that industry while looking after the ecosystem. And it's not just in terms of fisheries, but it's in terms of protecting that environment so the future generations can look at it and know it's there and know it's not been disturbed and not been destroyed. Just a few days after coming home, the Celtic explorer is heading out of Galway Bay en route to her next assignment. This is a state-of-the-art research vessel, and one thing which we've gotten with the Celtic Explorer is a real capacity to do different types of surveys. We can work in all waters globally. Uh, we can undertake a variety of research, both sort of acoustic research, um, research into the environment. We carry out this national seabed survey. So it's been a real drive in terms of the commitment to research. Now we, Irish scientists can go to international meetings, and we're really we're up there with the best of them. Worldwide, the exploration of the deep sea is discovering large numbers of species completely new to science. And these will form the basis of important new food resources or new drugs for medicine. The oceans below 100 metres are the last great frontier on Earth today. A frontier that Ireland and the Celtic explorer will be at the forefront for many years to come. <laughs>